Last night, someone shot and killed a Bay Area rapper who called himself the Jacka. And his killing is hitting the Bay Area hip hop community hard. Tonight, 37 year old Dominic Newton, known as the Jacka, is being remembered as an accomplished rapper. KTV's John Sasaki in our newsroom. And John, you talk with two of his good friends today. Gossi and Frank, one friend is another rapper who traveled the world with Newton and had been friends with him for 17 years. To me, it's, it's not even real, you know? It hasn't even set in yet. We met with Stanley Cox, who is better known as Mr. Fab, outside a home in North Oakland where he was clearly devastated by Dominic Newton's death. He was always positive, even in his darkest night. He always shed light, you know? And to me, that's what I'm gonna remember more than anything. Just after 8.15 last night, Newton, or the Jacka, was with friends in and around a van near 94th and MacArthur. At least one gunman opened fire at the group, hitting Newton in the head. Just in the house and heard gunshots. Came outside. He was laying down there, tried to help him until the, pol then the police finally came. Now there's a growing memorial at the scene. Lost a lot of people, man. Um, countless friends, several friends, um, associates. But this one... This one go up there, you know. This one, this one. Uh, I haven't felt this hurt in a long time, man. Since uh, since I lost my mother. Newton had been in the Bay Area hip hop scene since the '90s, starting off with a group called Mob Figures. He had so much love from different kinds of people from different walks of life. Rocky Rivera is a fellow artist and music journalist who became friends with Jacka as she covered the death of another Bay Area rapper, Mac Dre. These are the kind of dangers that he's grown up with for his entire life. I mean, people from his camp have been in and out of jail. He's taken care of them. He is the caretaker. So when something like this happens to somebody who we feel is untouchable, it rattles us to the core. Fab adds this shooting is a direct result of the troubles that so many inner city youth face. All you know is darkness. All you know is a disdain feeling towards the rest of the world because no one else has ever cared. His friends say despite past troubles with the law, Newton truly cared. Oakland police have made no arrests in the shooting, and there's now a $20,000 reward for the gunman. In the newsroom, John Sasaki, KTV Fox 2 News. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Star Status Chris back with another YouTube video breakdown. As always, make sure to smash that like button when you come in the door and also make sure to jump in that comment box below. So we're going to get into a heavily requested video that I've kind of been putting off doing. I'm going to be honest, but I wanted to go ahead and get it done today and that's to hit on the Jack. Now what a lot of people don't realize about the Jacket was Jacket was really on the brink of really breaking into the industry. He had a very strong cult-like following and it was like like a very organic base he built like it was it was super underground but it was a he had enough appeal in his rap style to actually gain mainstream attention and he was just about to get that but you know like always the streets always come and collect and they always take people that we really don't want to go soon so the whole jacka hit was necessarily not even a hit you see jacka is like a lot of other rappers they connect with different people in different areas that happen to be real solid street dudes that are actually doing things in the streets. And he just happened to be at the wrong place in the wrong time, unfortunately. The person that was that came blasting was actually a person that was trying to get the guy that Jacka was with, which I will not name because just for respect reasons, and I don't want to put that out there on him. But the people that actually was doing the shooting was not aim towards Jacka. They were trying to aim towards a guy that he was with. Jacka just ended up catching a stray from those people. And some people go as far to say that, you know, it was a shootout that was happening between both of the sides and somebody that was from Jacka's side, when they were returning fire, they actually hit Jacka and that's how he actually passed away. But that's not necessarily confirmed, so I want to put that out there. But I just wanted to add that into a video. That's also a thing that a lot of people say. But it was not a hit on Jacka. It was a wrong place, wrong time, hanging out with the wrong people. And I know a lot of people are going to comment and say, so why wasn't nobody ever caught in this situation? Look, when a person like the Jacka gets hit, best believe the person who did that is going to be dealt with so just know that the person or the people that was involved with the situation with the jacka they got their issue they're not here no more 
So you won't hear about nobody being arrested for this or any of that because the streets did what they were supposed to do for the legend. And that's just just typically what it is. It's just no other, no other thing to say about the situation. Uh, the guys are no longer here. So, you know, that is what it is. But, yeah, that's pretty much it on the jacket situation, man. It's not a, a lot of like a super in-depth story like it is on the Mac Dre situation. It's just hanging out with the wrong people. Like, and that can happen to anybody. We can hang out with somebody that's doing dirt or doing people wrong in the streets and somebody wants to get back and they might not necessarily know that, you know, a person that's not having anything to do with the situation is there. And sometimes they don't even care. So, you know, in which I've been told that wasn't that type of situation. The people were very unaware that Jack was outside there that night and they just happened to open up fire and he just happened to, you know, be in the crossfire of that. So... That's pretty much it on the jacket video. If you got any more suggestions, make sure to hit the comment box below and let me know as well, man. Make sure to like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thanks for the love and support. Signing out, your boy Star Status Chris. You know, let's go ahead and get started, man, to the interview, man. Uh, kind of let the people know, man, I'll start status world, man, how you got started so far as in the rap game. Shit, man. You know, nigga, like, I really, I really, I was born into it, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, I had, you know, when I was born, you know, I had young parents. My mom was 14. My dad was 14. You know what I'm saying? So by the time um, I was 14, they was 28. You know, they were still young, you know, and uh, I, I, I grew up watching them and uh, doing what they did. They, they you know, because they were there from the beginning of rap, you know, watching them break dance, watching them, you know, get it in, you know, and just all the shit, you know, so. I was really one of them niggas that, that was actually born to the, to the rap and, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, it was just destined for me, man, because, you know, I couldn't sit still in class. I couldn't, you know, I just wasn't one of the, the normal niggas, man, you know, who who had who could just take the straight route, man. I had to get in the street shit, do all the shit, you know, because I knew this music shit was going to gonna take me to where I wanted to be, man. So, you know, I was one of them cats that was actually born into it, you know. Definitely, definitely. So, you know, what was like your influences when you was coming up, man, when you was younger and you was, you know, who was you listening to at the time, man, that gave you motivation, you know, to go do what you do in this career? Man, bro, you know, who gave me really like, honestly, man, it's just so many different, so much different music that gave me motivation other than rap that was just dope music, you know what I mean, dope beats. I, I know I could rap, but I'm like, man, this beat's so dope. I would rap to this beat right here, you know what I'm saying, while niggas was doing, like, keyboard, Casio keyboard beats and shit. I was thinking about samples and, and um, you know, just just bringing some fresh shit to the rap, you know what I mean? But, um, who, who, I mean, I, I, all the greats, you know what I'm saying, Tupac, you know what I mean, um, E-40, you know, Sebo, all the, all the greats, Rich the Factor, you know, all the real niggas, man, is, is who influenced me to, and, 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 uh, and, and just gave me that motivation to say, okay, you know, they they letting real niggas like that on. You know what I mean? I could do this shit too, man. You know what I'm saying? And that kind of that kind of like uh, you know, gave me the drive to do it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, uh, you know, you've been in the game for a while, man. So, kind of tell us like how many projects you got out, man. Like how many projects have you released? Um, man, it's hard to tell, bro. Cause you know, it's just like I don't know, man. You know, it's just like getting in there, cause uh. I know a lot of cats like to dream about getting in the studio and doing their thing, but, you know, niggas like us, we just uh, actually went out there and bought the studio because we were doing all the shit we rap about, man. So we had money. We could go buy studios and, and you know, get houses and shit so we can rap in them and, you know, bring all the niggas over so we can have a spot. So that's what happens. That's what ended up happening, man. You know what I'm saying? We we just get in the lab and, and, and do thousands of songs, bro. You know what I mean? So we can have an endless supply of music coming out because I, I noticed that, a lot of these cats was getting signed to major record labels and shit, and they were, they, you know, they got one album out and shit, you know what I mean, two albums. And the rest of the years and shit going by on these cats, and they don't even know what to do with their music and none of that shit. So, you know, we just real got serious about it, started the business, and just started dropping hella shit. So it's like, I know I got over 20 things out, you know what I'm saying? I'm featured on over 20 things, and I know me personally, I probably got like about, you know, about at least 10 things out, just me and the mob figures, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's all underground shit, it's all mob shit, and um, it, it, it's for the real niggas, for the prisons, it's for the niggas in the streets, you know what I'm saying? It's just for the college niggas, 
for the black motherfuckers, all the thug motherfuckers, and everybody who just got a whole different outlook on the world and life, period. You know what I'm saying?